lots of you have been requesting some videos about advanced rigging like how do I build a 360 rig, how do I build an arm, how do I make an eye that is pretty and stuff but as much as I want to get into that there is some very basic things we need to layer it out before. So today we are focusing on the drawing layers themselves like how do you name them, how do you organize them in your rig because it's really important to have good habits when you rig because your rig is going to be used in all of the rest of the production. So there is kind of a right and a wrong when it comes to rigging. Unlike compositing, where I can just tell you to connect a bunch of notes together and have fun. In rigging, like I feel I have more responsibility towards what I say because I don't want to get anyone into trouble or to have like people rigging certain things that are not right and stuff. So let's start slow and build from there. Alright, so layers. How do you name them? When you create your rig, the name you give your layer is important because this is what your animators will see in the timeline. This is what other teams will use for their node system, like compositing, etc. So when it comes to rigging, we will usually decide like if it's front or back in the name. So why am I using front and back and not left and right? Well, let me explain. Okay, so you have 10 seconds to tell me if this is the right eye or the left eye. Well, it's a hard question to answer because it is actually the eye that is on the left of the screen, but it is currently the character's right eye. Even if you say like some of my smarty pants students, well, it's like 3D animation. This arm or like this eye is the character's right eye. So this is what we should use as naming conventions. And I'm like, okay, smarty pants, what if you take your rig and you flip it? Is it still the character's right arm or is it the left now? And then they're like, fuck. So this is why in 2D animation, we usually use front and back. But now where does that come from? So usually you would have your basic quarter front view and it's simply that the eye that is in front of the other was the F eye. So then even if you take your rig and you rotate it, this piece is still the F arm and this piece is still the back arm. No matter which side your character is looking, your pieces will always be right. So now that the layering name is out of the question, let's dive in and talk about their nodes hierarchy. Alright, so to teach you how to layer your layers inside your node view, I'm gonna use this part of my rig because it's like a mini version of a full rig, okay? So I'm gonna concentrate on this part. And what I teach you here, you can apply to any part of your rig anyway. So it's important to have your drawings all aligned next to each other because it's easier for your animators to find what they're looking for. It's also neater and it creates kind of a break in the middle of your rig where you have your drawing layers, Everything under it is like the compositing magic and everything on top of it is all the pegs and transformation. And when we talk about the pegs, there is also a way to layer them that is more helpful to the team in the long run. So as usual, every drawing layer has its own peg and when we teach rigging, we always say build up your hierarchy. Well, it's also important to physically build it up. So this is like my first layer of pegs. They're like the, the ones that are closest to my drawings. So this is the first layer, they're all at the same level. And then if I build up, so if I have like a second story uh, peg, <laughs> I'm gonna put it here because then this one controls these, this one controls these two. And then if this one controls both this one and this one, I'm gonna put it on top and etc. So this is very important because if you have a rig that looks something like that, sometimes it's just harder to get what's going on with that thing. Is it like a mad octopus or is it a rig? Hmm. The last thing I want to say about the pegs is how to layer them because sometimes you will have rigs that are more like this. I call them like loopy rigs because it's like cute little loops. And these are not bad. It's just sometimes hard to understand what's going on. Like if I take this peg, for example, which one of these pegs is the leader? So for example, if I go get both of my eyes that are individuals, then I have one peg that unites them and it's called the Eiffel. So if I look from far away, the Eiffel is standing directly in between them because it controls both of them equally with its own unique pivot. But if I go back to where I was before, this peg has a leader because it uses the same pivot point as this one. So that's why I'm gonna put it on top in a little tower because each time I go up in the hierarchy, it's always the FI that is the leader. And then if I go up again, this one still has the same pivot point. So I'm gonna put it on the top and on the top. So each time you go on top, if they all have the same pivot point, it's important to put them in a stack like that because from far away, you know that someone's the leader in there. <laughs> Whereas on the other side, where it's more like loopy, random pegs, it's hard to know which one is the leader. All right, so I hope you enjoyed these little tips and tricks and that you will be able to maybe have better organization inside your rig. With that, have a nice week.